At times, walleyes hug deep contours like a glove, tucking tight into corners and crevices along the drop-off. Long-line trolling presentations that don't penetrate these nooks and crannies miss the fish and miss the bite. So what's the alternative? Short-line tactics like vertical jigging and live bait rigging enable slow, precise delivery into pockets along the contour, leaving walleyes no place to hide. But sometimes, slow is not the way to go, especially when you need to cover water to locate walleyes or when increased speed is required to trigger strikes. Got him. That's where three-way rigs and minnow baits take charge, picking up the pace for increased coverage, imparting aggressive lure actions, and weaving baits in and out of key contact points that other tactics miss. It's the perfect blend of speed and precision for efficiently fishing large structures and zeroing in on key fish holding spots. Oh. Is that the one you said pecked you before? That's the one he could have been pecking me. I felt him come up and pop the bait. And then as we're trolling along, what I did is I just relaxed the pressure on the line and that bait sort of floats back up into the fish's face. And uh, that time it worked. She bit. Yeah, you don't nice put, fish. You want to put a lot of pressure on them. You got all the time in the world to get the fish in the boat here. Lots well, a nice day to see out here. Let me see her. Oh yeah, nice fish. Nice fish, baby. All right, there you go, yeah. Mr. Sura. The purple people leader, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it comes to walleye fishing. Precision is usually the name of the game. I mean, you've got to get your bait in the right target depth zone, and you've got to keep it there. Whoa, baby. And one of the really effective ways to do it is a simple hook, line, and sinker, a little three-way rig with the proper crankbait. Uh, we happen to be fishing with a, a new Rapala flat wrap, and this thing has got a tremendous slow wobble to it like a wounded minnow and it really triggers fish into biting. Again, precision is the name of the game. That bait sure does hook, boy. That dude really does hook him. Let me go back in on that inside edge. I was at about 28 when that fish bit. Take a look at this. I've got about a three foot dropper with a three ounce bell sinker. Maybe a, what, about a seven, uh, seven maybe eight foot uh, suffix fluorocarbon leader and the little flat wrap, that's all she does. Just watch this bait in the water when you're moving. What is Al moving? About a mile and a quarter an hour. One, two, -ish look at that. Averaging. Look at that flash of that bait. That's really triggering these fish. Work it real slow, real precise. You know, you're so efficient with the three way and uh, the flat wrap like, the, like this. You're fishing in, off the point and back around, staying in the zone all the time. If I had lead core or if I had to lay out boards, which work phenomenal when fish are spread high in a water co column and spread out or spread across the basin in a big area. But when it comes to precision fishing, and that's what we're talking about, precision fishing, you got to do it this way. And you're just quick, quick. You're in, out, drop it down. You can make the, the point on a turn, reverse the bait, reel up, reverse it, come right back through again. And the whole thing to catch and fish consistently is duplicating what you did, did as far as depth and speed. You can do it. Yeah, you know, all these hummingbirds we have, to have today all have speed control indicators. These fish have been coming on about a one to one one. And uh, that's been the most consistent. And you're always monitoring depth and speed. Some of the little tricks of fishing this technique effectively is getting the right amount of line out. And that may sound like, well, that's pretty simple. Yeah, you lower the weight to the bottom, you get the boat speed up, and you let out just enough line so that you can contact bottom as you drop the rod back. You don't want to be two blocks behind the boat dragging the sinker. That isn't going to work. You want to maintain that feel. You want to, if, if you can, when you pull this rod forward, I can actually feel the bait wiggling. That gives me a lot of confidence that the bait's running properly too, by the way. But keep that maybe no more than a 45 degree angle with the water and maintain on the drop back a little bit of bottom contact and you're in business. Just hang on. Oh, Dan, big fish, man, big fish. I mean, I'm talking a donkey. <laughs> oh yeah, really a good fish. Boy, did she suck that thing, man. I'm guessing this fish 
This is our big fish of the day, baby. Boy, is she a nice one, man. I'm telling you, she is a she's really bullet. Whoa, 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 whoa. That water gets warm. <laughs> you know, these walnettos, when they get in this deep water like this, is so much fun. And one thing about these big baits the, with, with the plugs, you know, we see a lot of guys out here, they're, they're lindy rigging with leeches and crawlers and or vertical jigging. Now nah, she's just a nice one. But man, when you put a plug down there, you get the biggest fish in the school. I thought she was bigger than that. Oh, I see what happened. Hang she was, yeah, she she was, was hooked kind of hooked. fun. Get her out. Yeah, the hook's out. Okay. Get that, get that other okay. hook out of the net for me. You know, when you're doing this type of fishing, shape is always a consideration. And day in and day out, the best shape you could fish on these three ways like this is the minnow shape. Since three-way rigging involves trolling speeds of about one to two miles per hour, lures that have lifelike minnow actions at modest speeds tend to perform best. Long, thin profiles with plenty of flash help attract walleyes and trigger strikes. Traditionally, balsam minnow baits like a number nine or number 11 original Rapala floaters have dominated three-way rigging presentations. This was due to their lifelike action at very slow trolling speeds. Small plastic bodied floaters like Storm Thunderstick Mad Flash or Juniors are good alternatives as well. Jointed lures are less used for three-way rigging but can be just as deadly at times. Good examples are a number nine or a number 11 jointed Rapala or Storm Jointed Minnow Stick. Jointed lures usually wobble best whenever extremely slow speeds are required. The introduction of Rapala's number eight and number 10 flat wrap added a broader lure profile to three-way rigging options without sacrificing the classic wounded minnow action. It's a particularly good choice when large walleyes are looking for a substantial meal. You know, just on the way we're fishing here, Al, up in, uh, like, you're in like 26, 27. I'm on the port side of the boat, and when I've got about a six, six and a half foot rod out, so my bait is slightly separated from his. He's probably, the way we're working is he's a little bit deeper, I'm a little bit shallow, so we're, we're covering a couple of different depth levels at similar speeds, but, you know, by manipulating the rod and pulling and dropping it back and st stepping on the trolling motor, moving a little faster, a little slower, you can really vary the action and speed of that bait in, in a tremendous triggering effect. And at one time, they'll hit it on a straight crawl. Another time, you may have to trigger him by pumping a little bit. It's kind of fun. It's, it's great when you feel that fish bite. I, I like fishing like this a whole lot better than using, say, rod holders. It's just not as exciting. You don't get to feel the bite. The, you're, you're doing some things with your hands like this where you're accelerating. Sometimes you're you're dropping back, you're feeling a bottom like that, and then you just kind of lift, lift it a little bit, and it's amazing how many times on that lift, when you accelerate that bait a little bit, those walleyes are, are looking at it, and all of a sudden, that fish hits. And you can't do that with rod holders. You know, that's one of the beauty of fishing precision like this. I mean, you're right on the, the spot on the spot where the fish are at. Are the fish at 28 feet? Are they at 25 feet? Are they at 22 feet? You know, if you're dragging boards or lead core or even flat line trolling and you got a lot of line out, you're missing a lot of these high percentage spots. There's no way better, period, to deliver hard baits like this in deep water than in this three-way system. I mean, you have got to have good boat control and, you know, working with a GPS mapping system, a good depth sonar, reading the bottom properly and controlling the boat because the boat is actually the platform that we're fishing from and if the boat's out of position our baits are out of position so boat control is really critical to getting these baits in the right zone to be precise. The thing too with that heavy bell sinker you can actually feel the bottom content whether it's sand or mud or marl or, or gravel or rock and which is kind of an interesting it'll telegraph back what's down there. Oh got him Dan. Oh, it feels so good, boy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Just a pumping. Just a pumping, baby. You know, of all the different delivery systems for these deep water fish, you know, the slowest day in and day out is a jig. The next slowest is live bait rigging. Then you kick the speed up a little bit with spinners. 
And then when it comes to really covering water fast, this is the way to go. This is a way to go. She's a nice one, man. I got. I had one deep look at her. Oh, I love this. It's so much fun. Well, the nice thing it's too, so Al, you fun. got you got the search thing going on here, and you can always go back and rig and jig fish. But this is a great way to eliminate water and just uh, find fish too. Especially finding big fish like this gal. Yeah, she's a good one. I'll tell you that. She's a good one. Whoa, oh, man, she is pulling. She is pulling, baby. She's a good sign, oh, yeah, but they don't want to fish. come up. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's a good one. Okay, hang on, hang on. Let, let me see. Okay, okay. Oh, man, what a whopper. Go well. Okay, okay. Wait till you see this, mama. Huh? <laughs> I'm glad Dan started catching them on that, on that smaller smaller size fat. Look at that. Look at that. Mouthful of hook, huh? Look at that. Woo! Ooh. What a way to catch big fish. Not to mention a whole lot of fun doing it. I need a pliers. No, wait, wait, I got it. I got it there. I got it there. I put a perch color on and got into the big dogs. Got into the big dogs. Look at that one, huh? <laughs> Let's get her back. <clears throat> Well, she's a big gal. There she goes. You know, the times of the year, and as far as locations go, where I've been really done well pulling three ways and minnow baits like this, is number one, in summertime right now on these deep flats. We're, 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 it's, it's summer, the water's in the 70s. We've got a lot of fish out here, and we're trying to get the biggest fish in the school, not necessarily numbers, so we're not rigging. We're pulling hard baits, and hard baits always produce bigger fish, generally, than live bait or jigs do on a regular basis. So that's one of the spots. In fall, in a lot of the deep water lakes that we fish, when a lot of the fish quit suspending, get down on, 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 uh, on the bottom and tight to structure, is one of the absolute best times to pull a three-way in a minnow bait like this. It'd be my number one pick, the fall bite. And in rivers, it's incredibly productive all season long. Ends of wing dams, ends of rock piles, old channel basins, ledges, edges. Phenomenal way of catching big fish fast, not to mention an awful lot of fun. Come here, take a look at this. Look, look at what I'm looking at. The unit on the right is a Humminbird 1100 series and it's connected to Al's bow unit, which is a 788. So he is seeing exactly what I'm seeing and as he's working these spots, there's a, there's a plot track, so I know exactly where the boat is. When we catch a fish, if we want, we can mark it. But the whole thing is, it's keeping the boat positioned correctly on any structure, and with a mapping unit like this, it allows you to pick the spots out as part of your overall strategy, and then go work these little micro spots, these corners, these points, these rock slides. But it gives you a visual reference to where you're fishing, and I think that's very, very important. You know, most of our walleye fishing like, like this is done with a bait casting rod. This is a seven foot Compre MB. You know, very nice soft rod, ideal for these conditions. You're holding that rod all day. This is a small 50 cal cutter. Remember, I'm not casting. I'm not uh, leaving out big amounts of work. So that real light rod and reel combination is, is the way to go. Yeah, you know, you fish all day, your, your wrist or your elbow never ever gets tired. As far as weight goes, uh, generally, um, almost in any of these conditions, we're fishing 20 to 50, 60 feet of water, and usually two and a half to three ounces will, will do the job for you as far as speed and staying in the right, uh, uh, right angle you have to, have to fish in. Uh, we're using 10-pound test fluorocarbon, which works the best day in and day out. This is Suffolk's 10-pound fluorocarbon. And you put that combination together, you get out on your favorite body of water, start pulling down like this, on these tight contours where you know those walleyes are living. And a lot of times you're catching the biggest fish in the school where everybody else is rigging or jigging and they're catching fish. You, you know, but the big gals, the real big ones in the school, hit hard baits. Oh, oh, she just hammered it. <laughs> she just hammered it. <laughs> this, this feels like a better fish, you know. You, you can kind of tell 
they get that head shake going on and you want to have a, a, a reel, a level line, with a really good drag system. Like this Shimano here has got an excellent drag system and the fish rarely tear off unless I pressure them too hard. You resist the temptation to thumb the spool. Because if he's hooked or she's hooked lightly, it'll tear off. And notice the nice fish. Nice, uh, nice fish, Daniel. Medium action, extra fast taper with that tip that bends, a little forgiveness. It's all part of the right game here. Here she comes, Alan. See if I can get her. I see her. Buddy. I see her. She got, got that flat got across right. the Look side of her puss. That's a nice fish, boy. Ooh, yeah. There you go. Oh, there you Man. go. She was hooked across the bottom of her mouth. She was. Let she me get that hook out. Hang on. There you go. You got it? There you go, man. Oh, here you go. Another great walleye. Anytime you've got walleyes sitting tight in structure in deep water and you want to fish crankbaits to trigger them, the simple three-way rig is the way to go. You're fishing lakes, rivers. The system is deadly.